Okay, you want to start? Sure. All right. We're here with Brad at Through Lane Coffee Shop in Park Lane, and we're going to jump right into it because we're trying to crank this one out. All right, pineapple on pizza. Uh, y- yes. It used to be no, but I feel like I've come around and I actually like You've it You've matured now. like I a have, fine I wine? Have, I sure have. <laughs> I've definitely not matured, so I'm not, not on the pineapple train. Okay. What do you do to pay the bills? Uh, I'm a theater artist, so I, I am a director and um, a drama teacher and an actor sometimes. Oh, okay. So where it's do you la- do It's that? the lamest one to say <laughs> that no, you're no, an no. actor. So no, I'm no. more of a director and a drama teacher. Oh, okay. Do you think it... Why is it the lamest to be the actor? Because it's the most self-involved. Oh, really? I oh. just think so. It's oh, okay. Well, you would know better than I would. Like, here I am sitting in a coffee shop trying to interview people. Well, so. that's why I agreed to do this, because oh. I'm drawn to my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> the attention. <laughs> I like it. So, where do you do this? Is uh, I see a name tag around you. Is uh, I studio? work for a youth theater called Studio East. And okay. I'm sort of an independent contractor for lots of different theaters. Oh, okay. So, when you say you're a uh, theater artist, are you creating the backgrounds? Are you creating the uh, storylines? No, I, 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 I direct. Uh, basically, I tell the kids what to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. The best way to be. Which, of course. Unless they're your own kids because they never listen. Yeah, they well, don't. Yeah, but mine don't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this might uh, be really nice for you. Is there a song that makes you want to dance? A song that makes you want to dance. I grew up not listening to any popular music at all. Honestly, a big question that filled me with anxiety as a child was, "What's your favorite band?" Because I didn't oh. have one. So oh, wow. up in the '90s, I would li- basically put a cassette up to my Super Nintendo and listen to like record like the Link to the Past soundtrack. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Rock out to like. <laughs> Non instrument, uh, non vocal stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's my boss over there. Oh, hey. And um, so, as far as rocking out to a song, uh, I guess, I guess I gotta go with you know theater and say yeah. I'll dance to some seventy six trombones from the Music Man. Oh wow, I like that. Well, that's the most interesting answer we've had so far. <laughs> Little sure. side fact: I used to work at Nintendo, so oh yeah, I don't think you're you were out and alone where people would record the soundtrack and use it to inspire them or whatever like if there's I, a lot of people that would do that I reckon I'm trying to cram out some work or like uh, do a little graphic design if I pop on a YouTube playlist of like Final Fantasy battle music yep. it gets my blood pumping oh really yeah I love that alright cool what do you do for fun I play Dungeons and Dragons oh, with cool. my wife and some of our friends. Oh and yeah, I got some friends that are right into that. Or I read yeah. books and I yeah. draw. I used to want to like to draw a lot, but not anymore. Really. Oh okay. What kind of stuff would you draw? Like anime and stuff like that. I like or? frogs, <laughs> frogs and swords. Frogs and swords. <laughs> that was you did. That you did yeah. nothing else. Basically, no daggers. No, no toads. Absolutely not a dagger and never a toad. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this is going to go into the next one. What is your favorite animal? The frog. <laughs> is there any type of frog in particular? No. No? Just all, all of them. All of them. Yeah. I used to, uh, well, as you might be able to tell, I used to live in Australia, but there's uh, a bunch of frogs around there, right? Uh-huh. And Are they a... Um What's the term? I'm forgetting the term. Are they a uh, invasive species? No, there is a cane toad that's an invasive species, uh-huh. and they're just shitheads. <laughs> uh, nothing can eat them, so they've got no predators, so they just keep really fucking making nothing babies. Nothing can eat them? No. Th- I think there's some birds that have now figured out to eat around their glands. Okay. But they just breed so quickly. Like, they just pump out babies. So, n- there's nothing there. That, like, f- crocodiles, like big like motherfucking crocodiles uh-huh. will eat them and die because they'll like be poisoned wow yeah and they're so really the top of the food chain it sounds they like. are yeah by accident I hope they inherit the earth once we have destroyed it what the the toads toad? really yeah. well, I mean I don't know I feel like if they're uneatable they've earned it I think where they were from they were eatable like oh, some okay. stuff would eat it but okay. just because they're invasive and then there's nothing you throw something like that into Australia and then they're like well we weren't uh engineered to do this this way you know what i mean uh-huh. I mean, so. okay but. well it, it, it the uh who runs the world after we've destroyed it is open for, oh yeah i feel like it's open for applications <laughs> it's I guess. just going to be cockroaches and those yeah, toads that's true <laughs> <laughs> but i was going to say there's a bunch of uh, frogs in australia so i'd always be catching all different types of frogs uh-huh. and i loved them i love getting tadpoles and having them like uh grow and then i'd take them back to the creek and let the frogs go and it was awesome i loved it that's cool. I, and I used to be in the Boy Scouts, and yep. I wanted the reptile amphibian badge more than anything because oh, it had love. a frog on it. But in order to get that badge, you had to own 
a reptile or amphibian, and I did not own one. And That's a bit weird. I didn't think it was fair because the mammal study merit badge, you didn't have to own a mammal. Yeah. Re- reptile and amphibian study, you had to own one of those, and it was kind of an injustice that I, I guess I, to this day, still haven't gotten over. I'm feeling over. hurt by that for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you get like, what, your parents, that really it's such your parents saying, you can or cannot own this, right? Yeah. So you could be like, oh yeah, like I can't get that badge because these two older fuckers are not letting me have like a freaking anaconda in the household, you know what I mean? So I love frogs. I've never touched a frog though. You've never touched a frog? No. I'm blown away by that statement. You can go out to a, there's a reptile center on the, like out the Stevens Pass or something like that. Yeah. And you can just go out there and they're like, they've got frogs and reptiles and everything in there and you can just poke and prod them. Okay. Well, uh, well maybe I'll someday, maybe, maybe I'll do that. I feel like that should be your like 2023 checklist. Let's, okay. Let's get you to touch a frog. By the end of the year, I'm going to touch a frog. I love it. All right. All right. <laughs> I would love it because you'll get an email from me. Please email me and say, I got to touch a frog. Okay. I would, I would love that. Okay. What story of yours do you wish everyone knew automatically? Oh, God. I've spent years training myself to not think I'm important enough for anyone to ever need a story about me. So um, Why? that's a hard question. I, you know, just try to stay humble. Let's try to stay. But you, know. you got 80 years on this planet. Who gives a fuck about humble? Actually, I, I'm not very uh, um, combination, but so a story that I wish everyone knew about me. Yeah, like you walk up to some. Maybe it's a personality trait. Yeah. So let's say you walked up to well, me right now, and you're like. I, w- I would love it if you knew that uh, like I was in a car accident, s- yeah. severe car accident when I was 20, right? Reconstruction on my face. Now, it's a fun story for me. Like I don't, uh, Even back then, I didn't care that much. But all my scars are hidden by my hair. Like I have this huge scar across uh-huh. there. And I'm like, I would love it if I could just like have an end to sort of tell that because there's like jokes I play off on it and all that sort of stuff. But like, is there anything like that for you? I guess just because I love doing an old prospector voice, I oh. would love more opportunities to do it in an organic way. Oh, okay. So you're just like walking in. Can you give us a, a yeah, chance? Yeah, I think, this is I, think I think this is the this is when it has to happen. It does. I've created the opportunity for of myself. Of course, I like that. You Not very organically, this. but I've found no, a way to, to make it happen. You this to happen. Okay. All right. Here we go. Well, sweet sarsaparilla, there's. Gold in them hills, and we gotta get over there and check it out, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that was awesome. Do you do any voiceover work? Yeah, some. That's amazing. <laughs> I could, like, if I was to try and do that, I would go into some other accent that would uh-huh. end up sounding like way inappropriate, like I shouldn't be doing that accent, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, so I'd try well, That's to why stick. accents are hard, because they have to be right. Silly yeah. voices are never wrong. Yes, so. that's true. That's true. Uh, that, that was really good. All right. If you were ta- to take me to your favorite food place, where would we go? Oh, we would go to Jade Garden in the International District. It's my favorite Chinese restaurant. Oh, okay. Good dim sum, but even better, they had their chow mein with is soft that the noodles. One? Is excellent. Is it up on the corner and it has big fish tanks in the window? Uh, yes, it does, I think. Yeah, I feel there's, like I, there's I, a couple places that oh big yeah, fish yeah. tanks. Yeah, I, what am I talking about? Yeah, like yeah, I used to work down there, so we'd always go out for lunch. It's around on there. Jackson Street, I think. Oh, okay. I can't remember the name of the street. And so some well. of the best best gyoza I've ever eaten in my life. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I miss going down there. We used to go for lunch all the time there. It's like literally like three blocks away from it. Anyway, what is something that you have overcome that makes you proud? Probably toxic masculinity. Oh. What well, well, you can never. I mean, it comes for us all, oh. I think. But I've done my best to avoid it and to, um, yeah, just try to live a, a life of kindness and understanding and being open emotionally and mm. saying I love you to people when I, when I mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I feel like that's a, a hard thing when you sort of grow up and you're sort of like told, oh, like, boys don't cry. You've got to toughen up. You've got to do that sort of stuff, yeah. I grew up in a, with a single mum and uh, my sister, so I was uh, uh, sort of grew up and I was definitely softer than all of my friends, like emotionally. Like, uh, oh yeah, I was definitely grew up ter- terrible at all sports, not really good at anything physical, not, uh, not really cool, yeah, yeah. sort of a huge nerd, and so I'm just grateful right. that I... I I, I see the like stereotype of like a quote unquote nice guy and those like 
that kind of like fedora wearing archetype and I say by the grace of God that could have been me if yeah. I was I don't know had been with around different friends or had different parents do you know I, I, this is what I think is like I'm so impressed by anyone who's done anything outside of the norm so when you say like I was a nerd and I played uh, my wife and I played Dungeons and Dragons like that stuff's all the norm now but I'm sure you were doing that like years ago right yeah before it was cool yeah and so that to me, it now, like, like here I am, I've got like odd shoes on, right? Deliberately, not that I woke up in the dark. I love being different. Mm-hmm. When I look back at people that have made choices earlier on to be, to be different and not like you made a deliberate choice, like me putting on shoes is a deliberate choice. You back then was like, this is something I enjoy and it's different to them what's happening maybe outside around me. And I think that is really strong. Like, people think, oh, the brawn or, like, being, like, one of the, the pack is strong. Being the outsider that's, like, not trying to be the outsider is the strong part. Because ha- you have to go against the grain so much. I'm, this is going to be a bit of a tangent, but that's yeah. what I feel like is the fundamental difference between, for example, if I'm using Peanuts characters, between Charlie Brown and Linus is Linus is different and doesn't care about it. Yeah, and yeah. is like, I'm just who I am. Yep, yep. And I don't care if I fit in. Well, Charlie Brown desperately wants to fit in, mm. and that's why nobody likes him. <laughs> it's because he tries too hard. Yeah, and I yeah. think he wants it too bad. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I try to teach when I when I teach kids that you know vulnerability is true strength, and you yeah. know, and we come from a society where saying "I'm sorry" is a weakness. But I yeah, yeah well, beg to differ. I, I think. W, uh, WA, uh, Washington sort of America, like that has a sort of tone to it where I grew up a little bit different. There is definitely toxic, toxic masculinity there and still is, but it's, uh, it's a little different than what it is here. So I couldn't speak on what it's like growing up as a child. And it's, a, I mean, Washington is like a liberal bubble too, yeah, where yeah. it's, um, like it's one of the lamest states for me to actually be in and vote Democrat because it doesn't matter. The vote doesn't matter because yeah, yeah. we're very blue. Um, so yeah, it's tough. And I understand that I'm lucky to have yeah. grown up in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I honestly say my wife's American, so I moved here for her. And sometimes I'm like, if I'd grow, if we had moved here and moved to like Texas or something like that, mm. I probably would have been shot by now. With mm. like being, because I'm like, I'm pretty vocal about my uh, opinions. Like if something is happening wrong with someone or someone's talking shit about uh, whatever, I'll st- stand up and say, like, no, 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 that's not okay. Like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I probably would have been shot down there. Yeah, this is a safer place to rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, what are three things that you are grateful for? I think my health. Yep. And my, my family it includes my, my wife and my cat. Mm-hmm. And their, and my my parents yeah um, my mom recently passed oh i'm sorry to hear that oh thank you yeah about less than a year ago yeah. but you know both my parents were a um a great source of kindness and just an example of like how to be patient and strong and be flexible and nice and mm-hmm. um yeah and just i think i've got a great support community so yeah, i guess my health awesome. my friends and family and uh, I, f- I lead a very artistically creative job, and mm-hmm. I feel grateful that I get to spend my days telling stories, whether it's as a dungeon master or as an actor or director or a drama yeah. teacher. I get my, basically, my life's work is sharing stories, and I think humans are all innately storytellers. Yeah, that's I th- why I do this. Yeah, hell yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, the fact that I get to do that that's a, a awesome. lot. Is, yeah. Is How did you get into that? Just on a side note, um, in English class in high school, I had to perform a scene from Julius Caesar, and I did, and I w- it wasn't good, but I definitely thought this is kind of fun. Yeah. And I just kept pursuing uh, theater that way, and then acting led to directing, which led to teaching. Have you directed anything other than in the theater? Like, have you done short films? Have you? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> no? Is, yeah. is that theater where your passion is? Yeah, I think there's something just kind of like present and ethereal about it that's yeah, like yeah. it's there and then after it's, it's the gone. show's done, it's so, gone and yeah. it's something kind of nice. Yeah, it's, it'd be kind of nice, like this sounds odd, but I think with the birth of like AI and everything like that, like uh, 
stuff like theatre or like hand drawn stuff or there's the the mistakes that happen that won't happen again is yeah. what makes it great. So like yeah. if you're in a theatre performance and someone stumbles their lines and they recover it somehow and it's nicely, then people get to experience that, but that mistake probably won't happen again. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. unique it's unique to that show. And I think that's what makes it so alive and interesting to me yeah. at least. Yeah. I I love that. All right. You have to wear a shirt with a slogan on it for a year. What does it say? Uh, probably something along the effects of like kindness is cool or being kind is cool. Yes. Yeah. What I especially for when I teach, it's helpful to remind students that like just because someone's mean to you, you don't have to be mean back. Mm. And just the power of the power of kindness, I think, is something that the world as well as the students of our world who will become the future citizens of the world yeah, needs yeah. most. I I agree with that and then there's a part of me that doesn't. Yeah. So I think there's some people that really need a good kick up the ass. True. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I, you're right. And I feel like there's a, like not enough people that are willing to to do that. But ne- like there is now, but in like a a setting like other than like uh, protests or stuff like that, but in a setting there's not as many people that will like stand up and say stuff. No, I agree. And I, I'm passionate about, to quote Gandalf the Grey, <laughs> he talks about, you know, who are we to, to deal out death and judgment? Yeah. But I do agree that like, there are, while kindness is one of the most powerful tools we have, yeah. definitely there are some people who it's not going to work. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. And that's the hard part. It's yeah. Like, it, doesn't always, it doesn't always work. So everyone out there, be kind, be cool, and let's keep it moving. And touch a frog. And touch a frog. All right. Thank you very much, Brad, for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, I'll get an illustration off. Uh, I'll get one done, get the podcast up, and then I'll send you a link with all that stuff on it. Cool. Thanks, thanks for being so on much. here. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Take it easy. We'll do. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Nice and easy, huh? Yeah, I try to boss all your life, but back to work. Back yeah, to work. Good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for jumping on. Thanks. Thank you.